Okay. So, Kenya. Let me just say that Kenya is often celebrated as Africa's original safari destination. This coastal East Africa country is made up of a varied amount of landscapes. And as a result, it gives the opportunity for all sorts of different activities and adventures. Um, the country, let me say, is also well known thanks to being romanticized by movies such as Out of Africa, which was about and written by and about Karen Blixen, who ran a coffee plantation in Kenya and she falls in love with the country. And that was played by Meryl Streep and, of course, um, uh, Robert Redford, very, very well-known uh, movie. So um, the other thing that I wanted to say is that uh, the country has at least 40 different ethnic groups, and they speak over like 60 different languages, mainly English, of course, and Swahili. But uh, owing to its colonial past, Kenya also is home to a large European population, Arabs, Indians, Pakistanis. And I bring this up because you will see some of this architecture reflected in the lodges as I go through the presentation. All right, so I'm going to make this map a little bit larger because I wanted you to see what we're going to be covering today. So here is Kenya, and the most uh, well-known wildlife preserve is the Maasai Mara, which is right over here in the eastern southern part of Kenya, famous, of course, for the Great Migration where the animals cross the Marble River into the Serengeti and they do this cyclical uh, trek that they've been doing for many, many years, millions of years, in fact. A little further down is the Ambasteli National Park, the second most um, well-traversed park in Kenya. Here you've got Tsavo East and Tsavo West, probably the largest, um, the, the largest, sorry, going, going back to that, um, uh, land land preserves in Kenya. You've also got Chiyulu over here. We're going to be talking a little bit about Nairobi, the capital. Then we're going to go up to these lakes over here, the Lake District. We're also going to look at Laikipia and then Samburu. So those are quite a lot to, to cover. It's a bit of an intensive. I'm going to do my best to keep it uh, flowing. Um, but at least you've got an idea of, um, of what we're going to cover. And also you can uh, see the neighboring countries are Ethiopia in the north, you've got Sudan, you've got Uganda, you've got uh, Tanzania, which of course is down here in the south, Somalia, and you've got the Indian Ocean. So that's it in a nutshell. All right, let me move on to the next slide. All right, so we've spoken about the location of the country, and the country is very, very rich in wildlife. That is why it is one of the most iconic game parks. And it has a, a culture with a very friendly people, very welcoming. And uh, the geographic diversity of the landscapes will show in the game viewing. There is absolute prolific game viewing. And the different landscapes and topography uh, make it uh, so unusual and so unique. All right. Um, let me just say this to you uh, as well, is that you'll uh, understand from the culture, um, you'll see a lot of the Maasai warriors. These are tall warriors, and they have their uh, red outfits on. They're covered, covered in these red outfits, and they um, um, are a uh, very iconic part of the landscape as well. That is the Maasai people. There's also uh, the Sambura tribe, and a lot of them you will find scattered throughout your travels, and um, they wear their traditional garb in the beadwork and, um, and, and, uh, and the materials. So um, moving along, access and logistics. So there are a lot of direct flights from the U.S. In fact, there's a, a recent direct flight from um, uh, uh, JFK directly into Nairobi, and lots of flights from Europe. So great, easy accessibility uh, into Kenya. The airport is called Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, and it's very, very close to the city. It's about an hour's, uh, 25 to an hour's minute drive. There's also a smaller regional airport, which is called Wilson Airport, mostly for domestic flights. And there's Moy International Airport, which 
uh, if uh, used if you're going to be doing coastal trips or you're going into um, uh, Mombasa. All right, and then also Kenya can also be accessed through Tanzania. You can fly into um, Kilimanjaro International Airport, and then you can connect, of course, into Kenya. Now, getting around. Well, there are two main ways to get around Kenya. The easiest and the most time effective is through fly-in safaris. In this way, of course, you're getting a great bird's eye view as you fly over the terrain, um, but it's quick and uh, sometimes the roads can be quite bumpy, so it's a little bit more luxurious. And uh, there's a great network of flights and shuttles and private charters, so you can get around quite easily between cities and lodges. And once you're on the ground, the lodges will provide their game um, guides. So they'll have their own vehicles, and the game drives will, of course, be um, part of the lodge, and that is the best um, way to maximize your time. The second way, of course, is via land. Uh, the, I said a little earlier on, the roads can be quite bumpy, but, uh, and the distances are quite vast. But in this situation, uh, a lot of times people like to do these uh, overlands because they have more time and they can concentrate on photography and specialty viewing, etc. And you also get a, a more leisurely way of seeing the Kenyan landscapes. So those are the two ways of getting around flight and overland. That's a picture of, an, uh, of one of the small um, planes that take you from uh, lodge to lodge. And there are a couple of different types of safari packages. The most common that everybody knows about is just the game package. And in this case, you're flying in. You are landing at your uh, airstrip at your safari lodge, okay? And then, of course, the game drives will be done by the trackers and the guides from the lodge, Okay, and very often you will share, as you can see in the bottom hand uh, corner over here, you will share the vehicle with other uh, visitors, unless, of course, you want a private vehicle and you can pay a surcharge for that. So that is the, the main the game package. The second type of safari package is full board, and here is when you get your own private guided safari, and your guide is with you through the entire travel throughout the country. In this uh, circumstance, all the vehicles will have to be closed, not open vehicles, because of the dust and because of the distances. So it is, a, it is a law that you aren't allowed to go into open vehicles. Now, a lot of the vehicles in Kenya and in Tanzania have uh, pop-up uh, tops. So you can see in this bottom-hand corner over here, um, uh, folks who are uh, able to still you know, get out, so to speak, stand up and see the, um, the animal food from their vehicle. So those are the two types of packages. There's another example of a, um, of a viewing in, in, in uh, the closed vehicles of the pop-ups. All right, now the most iconic um, part of Kenya, what everybody knows Kenya for, is the Great Migration in the Maasai Mara. And in this uh, circumstance, you've got over a million, 1.5 million wildebeest and zebras and all kinds of antelope, and they cross the Marlborough River. You can see in the bottom left-hand picture, they're starting to get towards the river, and it's crazy, and there's dust, and there's predators, and there's crocodiles, and it's truly a bucket list experience. And this happens, you know, this has been happening, I should say, for, you know, for many, many years. And they do the cycle, and they cross the river to look for greener pastures. And um, in Kenya, the actual crossing is for a little bit of a shorter period than in the Serengeti, um, because that is a, a kind of has a, a much larger game uh, uh, parks. But the uh, key time to go and see this great spectacle is from about June to October, which is their winter and our summer. Anyway, it's truly a spectacle, and. Um, that is why I started out just by mentioning this spectacular uh, situation. Here you're seeing some of the animals in the plains. I also wanted to mention before I get into the parks themselves that uh, Kenya is very, very easily paired with other uh, countries. Uh, Tanzania, of course, which has the Great Serengeti, is very close by, and you can go to the Serengeti National Park, you can go to the Ngorongoro Crater, People like to climb Kilimanjaro and go to Lake Manyara. So there's Tanzania, or some people say Tanzania. Then, of course, there is idyllic Zanzibar, which is one of these barefoot luxury islands very close off 
in the eastern in the Indian Ocean. And so that's very, very often paired, especially with honeymooners. You go on your safari and you land up in Zanzibar, or for that matter, in the Seychelles, which is fairly close by. Uganda and Rwanda are very, very close and are easily paired for gorilla trekking. That is the main, of course, attraction of Uganda and Rwanda. And in South Africa, there are daily flights now to Johannesburg, uh, to the Victoria Falls, and to Cape Town. So you can link East Africa with Southern Africa and the Victoria Falls quite easily. It's definitely uh, doable. All right, so the first area of interest, of course, is the capital, Nairobi. And um, Nairobi National Park is very, very close to the city. It is actually the only game of in the world that is that close uh, to a major city. And it still miraculously has the big four. It just doesn't have elephants, but it's still close by, and um, a lot of people go to the Nairobi National Park. Also in Nairobi, if people stay overnight or have a full day, there is the Karen Blixen Museum. I mentioned Karen Blixen earlier on. Uh, she, of course, was um, this woman who had this uh, coffee plantation, and uh, she fell in love with the land, and she has a great deal of history behind her with her Danish, um, uh, sorry, her Swedish husband, Darren Breuer from Blixen. And so you've got the Karen Blixen Museum, you've got the Giraffe Center, which is a, uh, a sanctuary for, um, for endangered giraffes. And you also have the famous David Sheldrick Elephant Orphanage. And so although you may not be able to see elephants in the park, you can certainly go to the orphanage. So quite a lot to do in the actual area of Nairobi. Right, so many of you have probably heard of the famous Giraffe Manor. This is a fantastic manor home. And um, it is an iconic building, and it's like walking into the film of Out of Africa. It only has 12 rooms. One of the rooms is named after Karen Blixen herself. And it's famed because of the uh, Rothschild giraffe who actually come in. You can see them popping in their heads. They come in in the morning and uh, sometimes early evening, and uh, they can be fed. And it's truly an absolute treat. I can attest to that myself. There, there is a, a, a lovely view of the manor, and you can see the giraffes popping in, and it's, 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 it's a very, very popular and, and, and iconic uh, uh, hotel. And so I advise if people have heard about it or want to stay there, that they definitely try and book a year in advance or a long time in advance because it's quite popular. So that is Giraffe Manor. Then, of course, there is Hemingway in Nairobi, and this is set between the park and the Yongong Hill. So it's very colonial looking. Uh, it's very peaceful. It has 45 suites, and it's very uh, luxurious. You have your own personalized service with a dedicated butler. And that's a lovely picture of, um, of, the, um, of the Hemings Way, you can see. And last but not least in Nairobi is the famous Fairmont. This is a historic landmark property. It dates back to 1904. It's got that old world charm, and it's very elegant, and it's got a contemporary feel. There are 143 rooms, 27 luxurious suites, and it's very, very tropical, uh, beaut beautifully appointed. It's got spa facilities and um, a, an absolutely gorgeous hotel. This gives you a feel, again, of the sort of European elegance of the, of the hotel. Again, the um, colonial influence, and you'll again see a little bit more of the African influence, and later you'll see more of the Moroccan influence. And that's what's so wonderful about um, Kenya, the diversity of the architecture and all the lodges and the hotels. All right, so we'll come back to the Maasai Mara, which is the first of the iconic game parks. And uh, again, it's named after the Maasai uh, tribe, borders with Tanzania, and, of course, it is the wildebeest migration that, um, that gives it its, its appeal and its allure. Uh, grassy plains, rolling hills, lots of rivers, and uh, a great deal of activities to do in the Mara. You can do the hot air balloon rides, which, by the way, are magnificent early in the morning. And you uh, do your hot air balloon ride, and you look over the plains, of the Mara, and it's just magnificent. There's horseback riding. There's a lot of cultural interactions with the Maasai. Highly recommended. They're a very spiritual, kind of peaceful tribe. They're actually vegetarian, although they herd a great deal of, um, 
of, 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 of cows and, um, and, and uh, definitely worthwhile going to a Maasai village or having some kind of Maasai interaction with your safari. Okay, here you're beginning to see the, um, in this picture, you know, the, the wildebeest coming down to the water and, and crossing. In fact, I'll just pause for a second here. When I took a fan uh, of eight uh, agents several years ago, we were all poised along the river and we saw these wildebeest coming in the distance. It's, it's as if somebody, you know, whistled and everybody hears from around the entire Kenyan peninsula and they uh, follow and they get to the river and we were there waiting for them to cross. We wanted to see that spectacle. And lo and behold, nobody crossed. And we put our binoculars uh, up and we looked a little closer and you could tell that right on the river edge were two big fat crocodiles. And as a result, nobody crossed that day. And so we all had to go back to our respective lodges and we tried again on day two. And luckily for us, on day two, there were no crocs and they crossed the river with all that spectacle of, 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 um, of dust and noise. Truly amazing. All right, so a couple of lodges in the Maasai Mara, Angar Mara, which is actually the we stayed, is absolutely magnificent. It's up on a peninsula. And um, there are two sets of rows of, of 15 tents in each camp, beautiful, very luxurious, and great, great views. And it's owned, uh, it's owner run. So uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, attention to detail and a great choice of activities, hot air ballooning, uh, photography safaris. You can walk on the edge of the Great Rift Valley and you can also, of course, go and uh, do a cultural visit with the Maasai. And here is the picture that I wanted to show you, particularly this one over here in the top right-hand corner. Um, that is the view of the plains of Africa. That is what really reminds you or makes you think of the movie um, of Out of Africa. Just spectacular. So that's the Angamara. You've also got Mahali, Missouri. This is also five-star, 12 very uniquely de uh, designed tented suites. You can see the architecture over there. And um, uh, it uh, has a fantastic uh, spa, the Saro Spa. And you can, of course, uh, ooh, hold on a second. Let me get back into the um, presentation. Hold on. Hmm. Technical difficulties. Hold on one second. Oh, there we are. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, going to show you a more detailed uh, picture of the um, of the hotel and its architecture. Absolutely gorgeous with the uh, infinity pools and the spread of the game park in front of you. Right, the next area of interest is the Amboseli National Park. And this is the uh, second most popular park in the southern part of Kenya, and it's right across the border from Tanzania. And you've got these gorgeous views of Mount Kilimanjaro in the backdrop, in the background. And uh, what it's really known for, as you can see in the picture, is its large herds of elephants. Uh, but the game viewing in every respect has certainly got the big five, but the elephant is a big attraction. And it's um, dominated by Lake Amboseli which is dry quite often, except in the rainy season. And it's very accessible and very close to Nairobi. So that's why the Maasai Mara or the Mara and Amboseli are really, really popular because they are very close to the airport. And um, they tend to be, I can say, uh, quite crowded during the peak season. So just to know that sometimes you need quite a lot of vehicles around a single sighting. So if you are able to go... Um, uh, you know, outside of the peak season, sometimes it's definitely food for thought. Another uh, top lodge in Amboseli is Tortillas Camp. And um, this is uh, named after the flat-topped umbrella thorn trees. They've got all these acacia trees in Kenya. And the thorn trees is the um, uh, tortillas, um, is, is the name for one of these uh, uh, trees. And that's what the lodge is named after. There's 16 tents, one family tent. They've also got a private house and um, lots to do there. 
It's another gorgeous picture. Again, it's the views. You can see in the right-hand corner over here of Kilimanjaro in the background. Um, Africa is always so romantic and so uh, inspiring. Another area of interest is Savo. And you can combine East Savo and West Savo. It's a huge land mass. And um, definitely, um, uh, uh, definitely, sort of restricted to either going to the east or to the west because they're so large. But the visitors to Tsavo can look forward to very dramatic scenery, and it includes springs and some uh, waterfalls. And this actually makes the game viewing even more exotic. If, exotic, if you can imagine that, because with these great geological back. Uh, backdrops, it's fantastic. Now, Tsavo East is also well known for its herds of elephants, and they call them the red elephants. It's a big attraction. And that is because of the layers of red dust um, that they get covered in. And I'll show you another picture in, on the next page, but there's also a lot of buffalo and um, truly a, um, a, a, you know, a lovely destination. And some people who like to go to the beach in Kenya uh, you can obviously combine the beach with Savo East. That's a gorgeous picture of the red elephant you can see over here. That particular one has um, a lot of dust, and uh, it is a, uh, a phenomena in a way. Another area of interest is Chiulu. And Chiulu Hills is a mountain range of about 100 kilometers, say 62 uh, uh, feet, um, uh, so, sorry, yeah, yeah, of volcanic of, of, of volcanic fields. And when I was there, dotted along the road, you can see big pods of black lava. So again, the whole geography of Kenya is so fascinating because of such diversity. It is a magical land, as I said, of black frozen lava, and it's studded with blazing red hot poker trees. We had a couple of red hot poker trees in uh, in my house in South Africa. And uh, it also has uh, extinct volcanoes, and it's wreathed in dense forest, forest, I should say, and hung with Spanish moss. I mean, how more exotic and romantic is that? And it boasts some of the best views of the um, peak of Mount Kilimanjaro to the west, and definitely um, a, a truly wonderful spot to visit. Now, the top lodges in Chiulu is Old Donyo Lodge. And uh, this is wedged between Tsavo East and Amboseli. Uh, it blends a kind of contemporary design with the rich culture of the Maasai. There are six suites, but small, and a ton of things to do. It's got the night drives. It's got the bush walks. You've got horseback riding. You've got mountain back riding, trekking, all sorts of things. And one of my favorites are the star beds. And so I'm going to show you a picture of that over here. So right here on the top, I'm not quite sure if you can see it very clearly. I'll try and make it a little larger. Uh, you can see that on the, on the top uh, level of the accommodation, they've actually got a bed outside there with the mosquito nets. And whenever you have an opportunity to do a star bed, um, the stargazing is, is off the charts. Just fantastic. All right, another lodge is Finch Hatton, which is uh, an, uh, another lodge that I stayed at with my sand trippers. And it's just been refurbished, actually. And it's beautiful. It's set around natural, fresh water springs surrounded by untouched wilderness. Just fabulous. They've got an elevated yoga deck. They've got a great spa and sort of wellness facility. It's small, it's intimate, and a lot to do there. That's another kind of aerial view of, um, of, the, uh, of the lodge. You can see the outdoor showers. Always, always exotic to have an outdoor shower or even an outdoor bath in the bush. That's my favorite. And um, you can see a much more kind of an African feel. So you'll, again, see all the different kinds of architecture from the, uh, from the uh, people who live in, in Kenya, from the European uh, to, the Arab, to the Arabic and to the colonial. All right, a couple more areas of interest. We've got the Samburu National Park. Now, what's great about Samburu National Park is that the game viewing is amazing. And yet, because it's quite far north in the country, it doesn't have as heavy a footprint as Amboseli and the Maasai Mara, for example. So it's remote. It's got dramatic landscapes again. 
And because of the fact that it is a little remote, that it could be a draw card for second and third time visitors. And as many of you know who have been to Africa and who have sold Africa a lot, it's a calling. And when people go to Africa and they enjoy it, they will come back. And every destination is different. Every safari is different. And even within a country like Kenya, the safari experience can be very, very different. So again, so for second or third time visitors, it's absolutely perfect. It's a little quieter, but the game viewing is fantastic. Another lodge in Samburu is the Sasab Lodge. And here you're going to see the Moroccan influence. And um, it's uh, only got nine suites. Again, you know, quite intimate. And you've got a great opportunity to interact with the Samburu tribe and learn a lot about their culture and traditions. That's a lovely picture of that lodge, and you can see the Moroccan influence. Beautiful. All right, another area of interest I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation is the Great Rift Valley Lakes. So there are eight lakes, and they're famous for at least the Lake Nakuru one is famous for the large flock of flamingos. And um, these, uh, uh, these uh, lakes, or some of them are alkaline, and some of them are fresh water. But uh, like Lake Nakuru, for example, um, uh, has all these flamingos because they feed on the uh, algae that forms on the lake bed. And it's also, by the way, a great sanctuary for black and white rhino. There's also Lake um, Naivasha and Lake Elementita. So, uh, you know, great um, game viewing uh, with the backdrop of these lakes. There's an, a, a picture of the flamingos I was telling you about. Just gorgeous. That's flamingos, that's backdrop, that's trees, that's lakes, that's everything that I've been talking about. Some of the top lodges was uh, Lake Elementaita Serena Camp. These are all five-star, by the way. A beautiful setting under the shadow of the ancient volcanoes on the shores of the lake, close to the Flamingo Lake, the Nakuru one. They've got charming tented accommodation, private balconies, striking lake views, and great game drives. And that's a great picture of it. You can see the lake in the background over there. They tented, but the luxury is clear. Absolutely gorgeous. And another area of interest is um, Laikitia. This is the last uh, of, the, of the parks that I'm going to talk about. And the, this very vast Laikipia Plateau extends from Mount Kenya in the east to the Great Rift Valley in the west. And again, it also um, has a much uh, smaller uh, uh, tourist footprint. And yet it's a haven for an abundant amount of wildlife. And uh, so let's see what else. Uh, you can do the horseback ride. You can do the walking safaris. In fact, you can do a lot of different activities because it is remote. And also got a wealth of endangered species, got the black rhino, wild dogs, the greedy, uh, greedy zebras, and all sorts of um, herds of elephants, 2,000 elephants. So if, if one has the opportunity to go a little bit more remotely, there's a lot to offer and to say about that. It's unobstructed, and um, the area is, is one massive wilderness, just beautiful. The top lodges in Laikipia is the Kisigera Retreat. And this has six warm, elegant villas. And wait for it, it has the unique Ney Palad bird's nest sleep-out option. There it is, absolutely stunning. Certainly a worthwhile bucket list experience. And you can see the architecture is kind of a little sort of, you know, mixture. It's got a little Moroccan, it's got a little African, absolutely gorgeous. But to do the sleep-out and the bird's nest is amazing. And by the way, there's helicopter rides, all sorts of activities here. All right, and Solio Lodge is also very exclusive. It has only five uh, spacious cottages, but it is really well known, again, because of the rhino sightings. And with the rhino becoming more and more um, endangered, to be able to see up to 40 rhino sightings you know, in one day is absolutely amazing. So that's a treasure trove. And um, there are all sorts of activities, again, the sundown, the game drives, the bush meals, horseback riding, etc. And so the key thing here, as you're talking to your clients, is to understand what, you know, what the hot buttons are. And we can, of course, tailor 
uh, and customize an itinerary, you know, based on what they're looking for. Also, it depends on how much time they have. But you can certainly do a circuit with the fly-ins around Kenya and uh, have a stunning, stunning vacation with so much different, varied typography. Oh, by the way, that's a lovely uh, 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 detailed version of the property. All right, so we've covered all the parks. I wouldn't say all, but the top parks. And a little bit about the country. The language is Swahili. I mentioned that English, of course, everybody speaks English as well. The currency is the Kenyan shilling. The dollars are widely accepted. And as far as health regulations are concerned, um, you definitely need to take your malaria tablets, but also your mead yellow fever vaccination. So um, just, to, just to note that, the yellow fever vaccinations are now valid forever. So once you've got that, you know, you don't have to have it done again. And then in terms of the entry requirements, well, you will need a visa. Uh, sometimes if they're going to Rwanda, for example, you can get the East Africa Tourist Visa, which allows, you know, entry into Rwanda, uh, to Uganda and Kenya, which is a multiple entry visa. But uh, we've also had a lot of notification as of late that it is much better to get your visa online. There's been some different, you know, rules and regulations at the borders and um, particular, you know, in Kenya, for example, you can be uh, waiting in line for a long time to go through the border crossing. So we are definitely advising, and it's quite easy to do, but definitely advising your clients to get their visas online prior to going to um, to East Africa. Some more pictures just to whet your appetite. This is kind of how the uh, migration starts. You know, as I said, it's like somebody in the front blows the whistle and they start to come in droves and eventually they get to the Mara River. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to summarize the climate. By the way, here's some more pictures. I'd love to show the, the drama of it all. Stunning visuals. But I just wanted to kind of summarize the best time to travel, and that is, is in their dry season, which is from June to October. And, you know, again, if you're, if you're going to go for the uh, Great Migration, the best time is through July and October. But, you know, it, it does not mean that you can't go to Kenya any other time of the year. It doesn't mean all the animals are crossing the river. There are plenty of plains animals that remain. And so um, it's just probably, you know, better not to go during the heavy rainy season. Um, there are some times of the year where there's short rains and they kind of come in the afternoon and they go and it does not disrupt the safari viewing at all. All right, so that's it in a nutshell. And I just have to end by saying that uh, Gilt Edge Africa uh, has won South Africa's leading luxury tour operator for nine years in a row. So uh, coming on board with us and having one of our senior uh, Africa travel experts design a trip for you and your clients, you'll know for sure that you are in excellent hands. So there it is. Thank you all so much. I'm actually going to stop the recording now, but I'm going to uh, 